November 10th meeting of the Bequanic okay. Township Council. Um, Michelle? Mr. Cole? Oh, no. If you could read the compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. In accordance with the requirements of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was included in the annual meeting notice, which was filed in the office of the Township Clerk, posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, published as a legal notice in the Suburban Trends newspaper, and mailed to all persons requesting notice and providing payment in accordance with Township policy. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a prayer and a moment of thanks for individuals serving our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most gracious providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and general welfare for all the people of the Quantic Township. Amen. Okay, um, Michelle, if you can do roll call. Mr. Cole? Here. Mr. Phelan? Here. Mr. Vanderhoff? Here. Ms. Winterfield? Here. Ms. Mayor Florence Lynch? Here. Okay. Um, I'd just like to start, um, go off the agenda a little bit, and just start by um, acknowledging one of our employees uh, that we lost uh, this past week. Uh, we're all deeply saddened by the sudden passing of Dennis Lonigan, our Aquatic Township Fire Marshal. Uh, Dennis was an employee of this township and a friend to so many, and uh, he was taken from us way too young. Um, Dennis was so passionate about his job and his passing is a huge loss to this township. Our thoughts and prayers are with his entire family and his partner, Erica, who made him smile every day. Dennis will be missed tremendously. Um, visiting hours are tonight till 9 at Morris, Morrison's Funeral Home in Butler, and there will be a funeral service tomorrow at 10 a.m., also at Morrison's. Um, just like to take a moment of silence in his honor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, first item on the agenda is presentations. I don't think we have any presentations scheduled for this evening, so I'm going to move, move right to uh, reports uh, from volunteers. Um, is there uh, someone that would like to, I'm sorry, I thought he was getting up to talk. Um, is there any reports from volunteers this evening? Yes, Frank. Frank Spazzeri, 35 West Franklin Avenue, Chairman of Open Space. I just wanted to uh, let you know that we changed our Open Space meeting from tonight to next Monday because you guys were having your meeting tonight. That's it. Thank you. Any other reports from volunteers? Jay Wansick, uh, Chairman of the uh, Township Historic District Preservation Commission. Um, we had our meeting this uh, past week and uh, number of items on the agenda, but uh, one of the things we concentrated on was a review of the overall success of the Pathways program, which you all know about uh, in the uh, Northeast Morris County communities. Um, we also have some uh, comments on the Martin Berry House, but, and there are also friends here from the Martin Berry House. Should we wait until that agenda item? Yeah, that'll come up in discussion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Next item on the agenda, anyone else for reports from volunteers? That's it? Okay. Next item on the agenda is public comment. This public comment period will be limited to a total of 30 minutes. An additional period for public comment will be reserved for later in the uh, meeting. If anyone would like to address the council, please wait to be recognized. Come up to the podium. State your name and address for the record. Yes. We'll start with you. Yeah. My name is Nat Arkin. I live at Cedar Crest. My address is 303 Forest Glen. I'm here tonight to talk about uh, the Pilgrim Pipeline, as I did last month. And basically, I try to put myself in your shoes in deciding what to do about Pilgrim Pipeline. 
Here's what my thought process would be if I were in your place. First, if I had been elected to represent the people of Pequannock, I would want to know what my constituents think about <clears throat> having an oil pipeline come through their community. I think I would feel responsible for making sure that my constituents were aware of what's going on in terms of Pilgrim. And I think I'd want to give them some basic guidelines if they are contacted by, uh, by, uh, by Pilgrim. Uh, people who have not dealt with lawyers' letters uh, can find it very frightening. And I think it's kind of your responsibility to try to help your constituents understand if they get such a letter, what they can do. I understand you can't give, give legal advice, but you can tell them perhaps engage a lawyer. Find, maybe talk to somebody on the council or in the administration of the town. There are things that can be done. Now, I would also want to know what is the cost benefit of letting Pilgrim come into our community. We know that the costs are potentially very, very high. We know that there are also some costs that we can be certain would occur even they may not be the same level as, as the high potential problems. For example, we know that there would be heavy traffic coming into and out of the town. They would probably degrade some of the roads, and the question you may want to ask, if they do, who would pay to repair them? There would be digging below uh, the uh, frost line where the pipes would be laying, and that, of course, would send all kinds of dirt into the atmosphere as well as noise and there would be cutting down of some trees. And finally, uh, dynamiting if they encountered rock that they wanted to get past. We know that's happened and it will happen again. So those are the things you can be certain of if they come into the community. Potential hazards to public safety are far, far more serious. For example, pipelines do leak, pipelines fracture. These pipes are held, are sections of pipe are welded together if they are subject to vibration, if they are subject to digging near them, they can rupture, they can leak. Those are serious, serious dangers. And the most serious, of course, if there is an oil leak, this is highly explosive oil, the crude coming south from Albany, and there's a danger, of course, of an explosion. This, is not, this is, would not be the first time. It has happened in other communities. And finally, there's the risk of, if it got into our water supply, we would really be in serious trouble at that point. <coughs> Next question I would ask myself, if I were in your shoes, what are the benefits to Pequannock if Pilgrim does come into our community and we allow an oil pipeline to come through it? I honestly do not know of any benefits to the community. And I don't think that increasing the profits of Pilgrim and Global Oil will in any way benefit Pequannock. You can check Pilgrim's uh, website, as I did, and I found there are no community benefits listed. So what are the Council's options? Number one, <coughs> excuse me, uh, do nothing and send Pilgrim and the regulatory agencies the impression that you are not concerned about Pilgrim and make it easier for the regulators to approve Pilgrim's applications for going ahead with the pipeline. Eventually, however, you will face off with Pilgrim on how they will protect our community and what benefits there are for Pequannock, and you will face them alone. <clears throat> Number two, tonight you could and you should issue a non-binding opposition resolution to the pipeline and join a coalition of towns in northern New Jersey, a coalition that can stand up to uh, Pilgrim. Individual towns can easily be picked off by Pilgrim. They have very deep pockets. And number three, you could delay your decision until you talk to Pilgrim. If you want to know what Pilgrim will tell you, you, just, you can just talk to town officials in Oakland and <clears throat> who have um, heard what Pilgrim has to say and then went on to issue their own uh, opposition resolution. Or you can talk to people who attended the Kenelon meeting, the public meeting there, and I'm one of them. All that Pilgrim representatives at that meeting did 
was give some vague generalities, and every technical question put to the representative that night was answered by, I don't know, I'm not an engineer. I think they sent the wrong person, or they intentionally didn't want to answer technical questions. So tonight, I urge the council to vote to issue a non-binding opposition resolution to the pipeline and join the coalition of northern New Jersey towns opposed to two oil pipelines that will harm their residents and their communities. Thank you. Thank you, Nat. Um, I just wanted to make a comment that um, I have talked to many of you and many of the constituents that are concerned um, with this. Um, we have uh, been in communication with uh, the town manager. We are going to be setting up um, a meeting uh, with representatives from Pilgrim so we can ask questions, gather more information, and then collectively talk um, uh, as a council on whether we should um, pass a resolution. But we are setting up a meeting. So, um, yes? Well, we're gonna we're going to bring in um, probably environmental commission members and a uh, select few people instead of doing a big huge meeting like Kinalon uh, did, um, so we can get more concrete information. Mayor, um, yes, there's absolutely no reason we want a pipeline going through it. Exactly. I don't even know why we were asking them the question. Really, like, we just do a resolution and that's the end. I mean, I, uh, I, I tend to agree, there, but we want to get more information. Them, there's no benefit to us. There's no benefit yeah. to our residents. There's no benefit to anybody in New Jersey, as far as I'm concerned. Well, that's a, that's my personal take on it too. But I had a no lot of resolution. conversations with the town manager, and um, we felt that maybe we should sit down as a group first and. Get some more information, but I'm what totally in support. What information of, are we going to get? I have no idea. We're going to dig a line through your town, and we're going to put a pipe in. That's wonderful. It's right. not going to benefit you guys, and uh, great. Have a great day. Well, it's something then. I've, I've talked about it with many of the council members that I felt that we should um, get more information and pass a resolution. Um, that's something that I think we should I just, just put want to on say an agenda. What more information do we need? They're going to be digging in our yard. What more information do we need? I don't know that the answer to that question. The, the longer you delay I, making the decision, mm -hmm. the more difficult it will be to oppose them. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with Rich. Uh, we, we know what we have to know about what they're going to do in this community. I, not any good right. I, I tend to agree. I'm just looking at direction from other council members and also from the town manager. Um, so if you guys want to discuss it now, we can discuss it now and make a comment. Well, a, a non-binding resolution is fine, but it yeah. usually doesn't carry much weight. Exactly. It doesn't carry much weight on anything that we do. We have to think of another strategy. I think we should do that, but we really have to collectively think of something else. And I don't right. know what it is by talking to our representatives, calling them. I don't know. But when I see those resolutions, I'm, Exactly. They, they and that's why we didn't want to just make a knee-jerk reaction because other people were doing it without having the facts. That was the bottom line. I mean, I think it's fine to do it, but we still have to do more. I agree. I'm in favor of the resolution well, also. It's still not us that decides where it goes now. So. No, but we can still show our opposition. Can we get a resolution drafted? I see no reason that we can't do that. But again, it's a I don't think you have anyone here opposed to it. I mean, right. I don't think, yeah, no one was ever opposed to it, and we figured we'd set up a meeting uh, with representatives. So, um, do we need to take a vote on that, or we'll put, a resolution, put, put a resolution together? I'm good with that. But Dave, if you know any other strategies where we could oppose it in a stronger way, sometimes you have some good suggestions that are really well. Worthwhile. Start talking to our representatives. Yeah. My, in, in, with due deference to the people who've spoken, I don't know what I don't know. So, it it would seem premature to without fully vetting the subject what to and, do and really understanding right. what the true impact is um that, you know a, a non-binding resolution in opposition mm -hmm. if that's what you uh the course you'd like to take um i i i hate to see that preempt still asking the questions and understanding exactly what right. is going to go on as, as jay said i mean the the authority uh, for this pipeline to move forward is going to be decided at a level much higher than us yeah. Um, if there is going to be an impact, I, I, I want to understand what it is fully and so it, that we can deal with whatever situation may come. How quickly have you talked to them that they can come? 
I don't know their availability. If that's the, mm. you know, the, uh, what we talked about was uh, having the Environmental Commission kind of take the lead and, you know, have them schedule it and be the primary forum for it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea. So we can, you know, we can, you know, maybe have a representative from here sit in on it as well. But, okay, um, but we can. Do the resolution. I mean, it just, it, there's no good coming out of this. But we should move forward on information too, because it might. We should move forward on oh. anyway. We can draft something for the next right. and meeting. Vote on the resolution next meeting. And hopefully, and hopefully by then we can have them in. But yes, um, st come up, state your name and address for the record, please. I'm down from Seacrest, 212 Greenlee Court. There's 16 buildings in Seacrest. Mine is the closest to the existing pipeline owned by Spectra, which is the governing uh, corporation controlling the Algonquin uh, pipeline that comes from Texas all the way up to New England. So you have something in your record somewhere, a history of what a pipeline should be, look like, what are the safety features and everything mm -hmm. else. So somewhere in your records or somebody in this town has a history of that negotiating with these folks. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long Spectres are there. I'm there two years up here in Cedar Crest, mm -hmm. and each of the two years have been here. In fact, the last month I get a letter from Spectra all the people in Greenleaf Court, my building, not, not, nobody in the other 15 buildings get it, about the pipeline, the, the danger signals, if something smells like rotten eggs, or if you hear a loud hissing sound, and a couple, about five or six other warnings, you call an emergency number that they give you. They also send you a magnetic decal that you put on your refrigerator with the emergency number, so they feel uh, you know, anxious enough that they send this out every year to our particular building. My, my number one question is how many other buildings or houses or businesses in Pequani get this letter every year? Where's the history of this? How long is Spectra there? Somebody here or somebody in this county must know this. How long is Spectra there? 1960s. 1960. Has there ever been an accident? Well, not. The, there's never been a serious accident here in Pequannock Township. There have been uh, incidents with that pipeline. The probably the largest one in Edison. Yeah. About oh, yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, there have been before. leaks. Uh, there was one in Riverdale in the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, so the, there is a history, um, yeah. and, and there are safety protocols in place. The, but also, I'm not an expert in. But however. Each company has their safety standards, and there's the different levels of safety standards and inspection. And they all swear up and down that this level of inspection will do the job. It doesn't do the job. The most uh, egregious one is VP a few years ago. A lot of people forget that a year before the oil spill in the Gulf, they had a major disaster up in the wildlife in Alaska where they have a lower level of inspection that they swore up and down with did the, do the job, didn't do the job. It leaked, killed a lot of wildlife up there. So that's another thing. How level uh, is the pilgrim people on the same level as a quality uh, pipeline builder or owner as Spectre? So these are all things we'd like to hear from somebody who has some knowledge and expertise in this field and then even once you install certain inspection standards, as you know, you all come from businesses or governments or whatever, there's a difference between putting the stuff on paper, what the protocols are, and the execution of those procedures. Okay. They diminish the further down the line it goes and the further away from the event creating the, authority, the enabling legislation, as you know. So all of these type of things I'd like to find out who speaks for the town with knowledge and expertise and background, number one. I, I agree with you just the saying that uh, we oppose it and don't do anything else. If we have something a little bit more teeth in it, I think we have a better chance in court where Pilgrim is going to take us all. As you know, they want to exercise eminent domain. And, right, and we agree. If we're going to oppose it, we want to understand 
why we're opposing it. And yeah, that we don't no, want them digging you know, in our yard. That's why. Well, that too. <laughs> I, just, I don't care how Thank safe you. it is. Thank you. Anyone else um, have a comment? Yes. I'll be Kay Collins. I live at 21 Belmont Road, which is currently a dirt road, attached to Brookside, which is currently a dirt road. The parking lot for about five giant excavation machines, which are wonderful to watch work, because those guys that drive them are wonderful. But I'm here as an unofficial representative of the Chronic Township High School Band. I am their super fan. I go to their band competitions and bring the noisemakers. And I just want you all to know, and you guys, because it didn't get in the paper, that your band, your high school band, came in second in the state a couple weeks ago at Rutgers Stadium. And yes, and Saturday, they came in third at the national competition held in Allendale. You need to be very proud of them. That's what we are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Good evening. My name is Jerome Wagner. I'm a resident of Wayne. I live at 32 Hillside Terrace. Uh, I'm a member of a group called the Coalition Against the Pilgrim Pipeline. I had some prepared remarks, which are a little bit... Uh, uh, you, you unnecessary in view of what we've been talking about mm -hmm. here, but uh, I'll summarize briefly and I'll give you a copy of what I was going to say. I specifically looked at what kinds of things might we try to learn from Pilgrim that would change our opinion or uh, justify embracing them and bringing them into the community. So uh, the types of questions that I came up with, you know, what if they asserted that the pipeline would never leak into the water supply? I mean, you can say something like that, but, you know, what's going to ha actually happen over time is an entirely different thing. Uh, as we know, things wear out. They break un in unexpected manners. Um, in the case here, where if oil did get into the aquifers, it's not easily remedied. If it's dissolved, it's, it can't be as easily removed as volatile organics, which you can airstrip. So the contamination could remain for quite a long time. Um, let's say that they'll. Let's say that they state that they will clean up any problems, any uh, contamination that they cause. Again, to foresee what might happen in the future is is very difficult, if not impossible. I mean, would they have the resources that were necessary? Might they claim bankruptcy protection to avoid uh, doing that kind of remediation? Might they stall things administratively, you know, to buy time for themselves? Um, they might also claim that human error does not affect pipelines. However, there is industry data which uh, shows that uh, the pipelines do leak. So, and there's many other types of error that could occur. Not, not only error in how the welds might be made or inspected to assure that they were tight, but even things, you know, other activities like excavations in the area, whether for roadways or other utilities. Again, where someone unintentionally and without, you know, ill... Uh, purpose, malice, uh, might, you know, get into those services and cause some kind of problem. Much less natural occurrences like the earth, you know, the Ramapo Fault, which is adjacent, you know, some of these areas, uh, you know, which might cause a problem also. Um, the last thing I wanted to just point out was, you know, they might assert that they would be a good, that they have our best interests at heart, you know, to make a general statement like that. But I think in view of the letters that we've been hearing about recently going out from lawyers, to property owners talking about using eminent domain in order to get uh, onto people's property, I think we can sort of look at that and say, well, that might not be the kind of neighbor we really want to bring in here, at least not without, you know, some concern, protections, and so forth. Um, I'll echo uh, Mr. Arkin's, uh, you know, plea, uh, plea that we put a resolution in place, but I'll defer as well. I see that you have strong opinions on the board as well uh, relative to that. And I applaud uh, the deputy mayor, deputy mayor for trying to think of, is there a stronger mechanism that could be used? Um, and I don't know what that, I have no suggestions to offer there, yeah. but that's uh, an interesting line of thought. Well, we have to search for them. Right. We have to talk to our representatives mm -hmm. who are higher up than, than we are 
and tell them, look, we're not happy about this and we don't want them digging in our backyard and we don't want them digging in anybody's backyard as far as we're concerned. I don't care how safe it is. There's no benefit to us. I don't know what the benefit to New Jersey is, if there is even a benefit. Uh, from my understanding, the, the oil is going to come up to, where was it going, Rochester or something? Uh, Albany, or, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it goes through a lot of miles and miles. You know, 170 miles or so, right? right. For <clears throat> so so you, this, this council is in favor of doing a resolution. Absolutely. It's what we're going to try to find that beyond that can help the situation. <laughs> so, so you guys have our support. Okay, great. Well, thank you. I'll give this to... You can give it to Michelle, and she can always make copies and distribute it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else have anything for public comment? I was just going to say the same thing, but you guys are on the support. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, at this time, um, if there's no additional public comments, we'll just continue on with the agenda. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is public hearings. We have none for this evening, so we'll go right to um, ordinances for introduction. Um, we have one. Uh, Michelle, if you could read the ordinance, 2014-30. Uh, 2014-30 mm -hmm. authorizing the execution of a contract for the purchase of Block 4105, Lot 3, from Maria Cecilia Catelli. Okay, and uh, do you have any comments on this, uh, Dave, on this ordinance that you'd like to? No, this is a uh, purchase under the HMGP uh, FEMA grant program. Uh, it's one that we've been working on for a very long time, um, and that program is coming to a close, so there are not too many more opportunities to uh, conceive and mm -hmm. finalize contracts at this point. Okay, any uh, comments from Council on this ordinance? No comment. No comment? All right, is there a motion to introduce the ordinance on the first reading? I'll make that motion. Can I have a second? I'll second. Roll call, please, Michelle. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mr. Vanderhoff? Yes. Ms. Winterfield? Yes. Mayor Florence Lynch? Yes. All right, next uh, item on the agenda is resolutions for approval. Um, we have uh, quite a few of them, uh, seven of them. Uh, Michelle, if you could read through the resolutions for approval. Resolution 2014-216, authorizing the tax collector to cancel tax sale certificate number 925. 2014-217, authorizing the tax collector to cancel tax sale certificate 2014-11. Resolution 2014-218, authorizing tax office refunds over payments of cancellations. 2014-219, authorizing the release of designated escrow deposits. 2014-220, supporting a reduction in tipping fees charged by the Morris County Municipal Utilities Authority and urging the elimination of solid waste flow control regulations. 2014-221, canceling unexpected, unexpended capital appropriation balances. 2014-222, approving payment of itemized claims as set forth on the November 7, 2014 bill list. All right, thanks. Um, are there any comments on these resolutions from any of the council members? Rich, Jay, Kathy? Is that the first number on which one? They usually have the year associated with them. I, I, I didn't do that. I can double check. You can double check that and just make sure what, before we pass it? Okay. Um, that's it, Jay? That's it. Anybody else? Kathy? I have a question on 220 for the MUA. I thought we were going to add something in there or at least circulate this to the other uh, towns in Morris County so that they would see this if they wanted to join in with us. Um, I think that's down at the bottom. Is it there? Uh, Touch the clerk to forward a copy of this resolution to the Board of Directors, the Freeholders, the governing body of each Morris County municipality. Oh, all right. The okay. The Department of Environmental Protection. Okay, good. All right. Does it just go to a general mailbox, or does it go to the mayor? Or um, well, normally or when we send correspondence, just like when we receive it, we go to the clerk's office, and then the municipal clerk would distribute it to Okay. I hope it generates some talk. Thank you. That's it. All right. Uh, Dave, any comments on any of the resolutions? I'm good. Okay. And um, I'm good. Is there a motion to adopt these resolutions? I'm a little confused. Okay. Yeah, hold on. 
Oops, where are we? What were I, we talking about here? I was just about to say I pulled the tax sale certificate. The number 925 is the number that's on the tax sale certificate. Okay, so then I was just cleared up. Okay, so that was okay? Okay. Uh, can I make a motion to adopt? I'll make a motion to adopt. Uh, <laughs> resolution 2014-216 through 2014-222. All, right. All right, roll call please, Michelle. Okay, Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mr. Vanderhoff? Yes. Ms. Winterfield? Yes. Mayor Florence Lynch? Yes. Okay. Um, next um, agenda item is items for discussion. We're going to start with the Martin Berry House. Um, I don't know if Council has some comments first or if you'd like to hear from the public. I think Council should go first and then hear from the public. How does that, sound? that sounds great. Do you have a. Oh, I would like you to make some comments. Uh, uh, I think I think at this point. Everybody waits to hear what I well, think. Well, I think at this point, um, let me just start by saying that um, the, the Friends of the Martin Berry Group has done a tremendous job in, in really getting together as much information as possible. And I see a really strong group of, of people out there. Um, and uh, I think before we go any further, we want to hear from the council members to kind of get their takes, see if there's still questions. Um, so yeah, I'll start with you, Rich, and um, if you have questions or comments. Okay, first I would like to thank Lisa for the great presentation. Um, after I listened to that presentation, I, I gave it long and hard thought. And the first thing I'm going to tell you guys is, no, I don't want to buy this for a museum because we already have a museum. However, however, there's a caveat to that. I'm more interested in preserving history. I think that's more important. That's what this is all about in my, my book. Um, I've only lived in this town for eight years. Um, the significance of this to me for only being here for eight years is huge. So people who have lived in this town for 50, 55 years, 60 years, it's incredibly huge. So to me, it's important that we preserve history. And like I said, it's not a museum in my eyes. It's, we're, we're looking to preserve history. Um, there is another little problem, which we'll get into later, is how are we going to purchase this? Because right now, as it stands, our open space fund is allocated, all our money is allocated towards a piece of property that we're looking to purchase. So we're going to have to work out the logistics behind purchasing this without raising our taxes, too. So there's, there's a little give and take here. So if I was asked today if this became a question for us to answer on a, on a uh, resolution or an ordinance, I would have to vote yes, but with the understanding of where are we going to get the money. Okay. Um, is that it, Rich, for now? That's it. All right. Um, Jay, do you have any thoughts or um, comments? My main concern is what's going to the liabilities that down down the road. I, I appreciate the group. Uh, the group cannot raise the money to maintain the house, being a historic piece of property. It does fall back on the town to maintain it. Uh, I have concerns about this council putting that responsibility on councils down the road. Uh, I've asked the manager to look into a few options, which he's uh, investigating. Uh, as of right now, uh, I don't think I'm in favor of it because of the liabilities down the road. Okay. All right, Jay, thanks for your comments. I think I'm going to skip right to Dave because I think I know Kathy's, um, and then I'll give mine. But go ahead, Dave. I'd be interested in the options uh, that Jay is talking about uh, with Dave, but my biggest concern was um, the, the funds that the Martin Berry House could generate. Um, I thought that the group made a, a great presentation. I think that there's, uh, they have some great ideas on bringing in income into the Martin Berry House to help support it. Uh, and at this time, I would, I would say that I would be for that. Uh, I do have a concern, as Rich does, of where we're going to be getting the money from. But hopefully, uh, you know, we can do some county uh, grants and, and work with uh, the Preservation Committee also for getting money to help preserve that house and do the renovations that's needed. But I would be at this time for it if we can come up with the funds. Okay. And Kat, can I ask your opinion? Can I go last? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll go. Uh, I'll, I'll make a couple of comments. 
Um, I also think that preserving this house is important to the history of our community. I do have some of the same concerns that have been generated already, um, such as um, how are you going to get the funds, you know, to purchase this property? How are we going to keep it going? What if down the line, you know, some of the things the taxpayers need to think about if down the line all of a sudden it wasn't working and I'm just giving an extreme example. The house became dormant, you know, and we had to do something. You'd have, like with the house, whether it be sell it or do something else with it, you would have to pay all that grant money back. Um, so these are questions sometimes that people aren't aware of, that if you take grant money to purchase a property and then something happens down the line, um, that's just an extreme example. I think it's very important, though, to the community if we can do this. Um, I'd love to see us do it. And I think we do have a, st we, today we have a strong group of people that are there to um, help with the fundraising, um, help preserve this property. I thought this was interesting. I got, I just have to read this. Um, somebody had sent me this email today. Um, actually, I think this, this might have come from you, Jay Wozniak. Um, I had gotten an email from someone today where they said, years ago, when the state of New Jersey was planning the construction of Route 23 back during the Depression, they changed their original plans, which have, would have cut through the Berry property and redesigned the roadway so that it would sweep around the Berry property, thus saving the house and the property. Is that a true statement? That as far as, as far as we know, yes. Yeah, so for the fact that they took that into account, you know, perhaps because it was on the National Register, um, of historic places. That's probably one of the... Actually, it wasn't at the time. It wasn't at the time? No. That's interesting. So, so uh, yeah, a good attorney, <laughs> right? Um, but I, I, I would love to see this house preserved, and we just need to make sure we do everything we can to, with our checks and balances and making sure that we can have, you know, sustain. Um, because... Uh, we need to make sure we can keep it going. For so, years Melissa, to come. does that mean yes? Well, if I had to vote for it today, I would vote yes. But um, I, I think we still have a lot of um, things to iron out, and we need to make sure that the town can afford, um, you know, to maintain it. But go ahead, Kathy. I'm going to ask for your comments. Well, everybody knows that I'm a yes. But <laughs> with that said, just for the council's. Um, to feel comfortable with their decisions. I did some reading over the weekend that I just, I wasn't sure I was gonna get so many yeses, but I do want you to know that I was reading through the master plans of Pequannock, which the planning board has been responsible for. And I went back 30 years and I was reading the master plans and the rewrites of the plans and the confirmation of the plans and the open space confirmation of the plans. And the Martinberry House is the only structure listed in there that is part of the National Register of Historic Places. That means the Department of Interior said that this house should be saved. And part of the goals of the master plan that a lot of people besides this council here had a lot of say in, says their goals, objectives, and policies are to preserve the sense of small town, neighborhood, and community. And one of their goals is the promotion and preservation of historic homes. It's a goal set for people 30, 40 years ago for this town. We have the opportunity to get into negotiations with this house. I think sometimes we're getting way ahead of ourselves because we haven't even as a council said, Dave, please go negotiate with Eleanor Bogart. And I'm happy that we probably got it to that point. Because right now, that's where we're really at. It's not do we have the money to buy the house or how do we get the money or how do we preserve it. It's can we negotiate with Eleanor to a price that is agreeable to her and to us. That's the next step. All those other things are great things to think about, and we should start working on them. But without an agreement with Eleanor, there's nothing. So that's the next step, and it sounds like I'm so happy that we're there. And um, everywhere you read, the Martinberry House is in importance on the national level, on the state level, on the county level. Morris County calls it a cultural resource. So I won't beat a dead horse. I'm really happy. And um, I started to talk to... Dave and Bob about the house to buy it. And there's probably about 20 questions. He sent me an email today that I, I need to be brought down into layman's terms. But um, 
It's definitely a yes. Um, the Aquatic Historical Society that's being formed is just one of the groups that have, um, there's many people before you. I looked up in the master plan, the library started by a group of citizens who called themselves the Neighborhood Club in 1913. And if people didn't believe in them, we wouldn't have the library that we had today. The volunteer fire companies that were formed, if we didn't believe in those volunteers, we wouldn't have the fire companies that we have today. The police, 1817, a citizens group formed to protect Pequannock. They purchased their first police car in 1936. Now we have a great police force. All these things started by a group like all of you sitting out there and people up here having the belief that you can do what you say you can do. And I believe you can. Thank you. Okay. All right, any more discussion? You guys have anything to say? And if anyone from the audience, I think they're all stunned. Um, I can't say a word, I'm crying. Um, yes, Jay, come on up to the podium. Like I said, we have not officially voted on this. We kind of let you know our, our concerns. So if you do have other things to say to us, we would like to hear them. So go ahead, Jay. Thank you very much. Uh, I was very pleased to hear of, of the support that uh, we're receiving for this uh, ongoing project. It's a work in progress. Um, I'm Jay Wanzik, Chairman of the Historic District Preservation Commission, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Commission. Last week we had our meeting, and uh, the, pre the preeminent uh, uh, issue before us was just to simply ask Council to go ahead and begin the negotiations with Mrs. Bogart and find out exactly what the figure is that you're going to be asked to uh, agree upon. Uh, and we heard other questions and other, other good questions tonight, and, and uh, we will work with you to get some of these answers. Um, I was also heartened by what Rich said because we tried to touch on that in the presentation and uh, most of us do see it as not a dusty old museum but as a living history uh, and we wanted to stress that because there's opportunities uh, you know as, as kids in the 60s we all went down to Williamsburg and we saw the colonial lifestyle there um, there's nothing like that in this area for kids to understand that people grew their food and, and, and people had to you know nail a horseshoe on a horse and, and do those things. So there's lots of opportunities to learn what it was like in the different eras. And uh, that's how most of it see us. Uh, you know, the, the, the little township museum and the railroad station, that's the repository for the artifacts of the ages and, and uh, you know, everything from uh, James Evans' history to uh, uh, Derek Jeter's box of cornflakes. That's in our little <laughs> town museum. But uh, the Martin Berry House is seen as, as something quite different and uh, it will be a living history. Um, I'm not going to belabor the point. That's, that's what you. basically the commission is looking for. Though. Thank you, Jay. Any other comments related to Martin Berry? Yes. I don't, I'm Glenn Mathis uh, to St. Andrew's Court, Flanders, New Jersey. Uh, <coughs> first of all, I want the council to know that my son and I are here for the long haul. We weren't here just last week to <coughs> take pictures and take videos. Um, I think uh, I emailed some of the people with some of the <coughs> ideas um, what the uh, Steuben House is doing and the old barracks. We're, we're involved with especially the old barracks. Um, has anybody considered corporate sponsorship? <coughs> now that is something that could be a big chunk of what is needed to maintain this living uh, gem in your town. I mean, this, this house has been around almost 300 years. I don't see it as an option that you could possibly tear it down. Um, I've also, I've done a couple things on my own. Um, I've been in, with the company I worked with for 32 years, I, I, I did corporate events. And I'm still a, a corporate event uh, photographer since 1985. And one of the uh, outfits that I work with is CC Productions. And they do amazing things for corporate uh, functions. And I, that was one of the ideas I had, that you could have small, decent-sized corporate functions there. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I'm going to do Wednesday is I'm actually going for a job interview for Benjamin Moore in the research facility in Flanders. And they have a historical paint line, the Williamsburg line. I'm going to ask them during my interview... I don't know how it's going to go over. <laughs> I'm going to ask if they get involved, and at least if you guys purchase the house, they could do some of the painting. All right, so that's what I'm going to do on my own. 
And lastly, I'd like to say is no to pipeline, yes to the to the Barry House. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there a, a reason we can't uh, do that in closed session? Give you a direction. We we're going to put it on the. Lisa. No, I think that's, we've, we've got property acquisitions so as a title. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. Lisa. Go ahead. Lisa Dada, uh, five ninety five Turnpike, longtime resident of Taquanic. As you know, I support <laughs> the purchase of the house, and I just wanted to mention, as I sent in an email. We do have a lot of evidence from other houses in the area that run historic programs that they've been around for quite a long time, on average 31 years. So we have houses that were seven years, houses that were as long as 59 years. So we can have some longevity with this program, and we can sustain it. I believe you guys can do it. I believe so. That, that was actually very impressive when I saw those numbers on other historic houses and how long they've been but I in existence. Members can do it for here too. Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, you forgot something? Oh, second chance, huh? <laughs> <laughs> One other thing that, um, now my son, he goes to the Peck School in Morristown. He's high honorable, very proud of him. We're applying to seven schools right now. We just had Del Barton this last weekend. One of the things for volunteering at the uh, Morris County Parks, we got a certificate. Mm -hmm. Now, the certificate says that this last one was 91 hours. Now, hopefully, if they purchased a house and we're looking for volunteers, we could also offer that to the students. Now, he's only 13. He's in the eighth grade. But this is helping him with high school. And if you get high schoolers and you give them a certificate that they could put on their resume, this would help get into a college. <clears throat> that is a good motivation. I mean, this is opening further doors besides all the Nick the History Kid and uh, all the swimming and track and high jump. Everything else he does good. <laughs> this is something I would hope that they would offer to attract because not only are you going to get the students, you're going to have the parents, you know, do this. This is good. You need volunteering. You have to have volunteering. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did with him, but it turned into this. You know, and just keep an eye on him because he's going to be shooting for the 2020 Olympics with him. That's his goal. That's how we hope is to get the younger generation uh, passionate about. Well, this I type like of about is it, it can bring young and old together. It can bring people as a community to work on it. You know, together. All kinds of walks of life can work on this together. Good. Uh, anyone else? Comments? Okay. Um, so we'll put that um, on the agenda for closed. Okay. Um, next item for discussion, we have Ordinance 2014-29, which we um, had distributed at the last meeting. I don't know if there's been any revisions to that since the last it. meeting, but um, no, would you like to go uh, through that, Dave? Um, this is the ordinance authorizing uh, construction of the uh, water line in West Sunset Road as the uh, the first part of improving that road long term. Mm -hmm. um, we, we set it up as an assessment ordinance. Those assessment notices have been set at, uh, sent out, which is why we are not having a hearing until uh, two weeks from now, because we needed the sufficient time frame for notice. So the list we got last time was the full list of everyone that would be that, that impacted. All right. Does uh, any council members have more comments, or is there more discussion or questions to be had on Thank that you. ordinance? No questions. All right. So we'll have that on uh, next Thank meeting you. for uh, public hearing. public hearing okay. and adoption. Okay. All right. Um, next item for discussion is the township clerk uh, selection process. Uh, we have advertised <clears throat> for one straight month on the League of Municipalities website. And Dave, maybe you want to just give us an update of uh, how many resumes you got and how uh, we can talk about how the council wants to be involved in the process with the interviewing and whatnot. Sure. Um, I've received five uh, resumes from people who are uh, registered municipal clerks at this point. Um, yeah, over the course of you know, the last six years, we've had two rounds of uh, Interviews we did it two different ways, so I'm looking for direction in terms of how to move forward from here um, There aren't so many of them that uh, I could perhaps do an initial round of interviews and then make a recommendation for like a final three 
Um, when we've had a, a lot of resumes in the past, we went through a process where uh, council people kind of each selected uh, their top three resumes, and then we did a you know, scattergram of where they were uh, overlapped, but we, we don't have the 20 resumes that we did um, five years ago. So uh, really looking for how you want to move the process. Well, let me ask um, uh, council members how you feel about this. I mean, since there are five, do you feel like you want to be involved in the process of all five or let Dave narrow it down to three? I'd like to see all five resumes. Yeah, I'd like I'd to, like to read resumes. through those resumes. Then I'd like to make a comment on each one well, of those Well, maybe we resumes. should each make a recommendation right. of three mm -hmm. and see so where it lands. You make your recommendation. I make my recommendations. Um, Jay makes okay. his. And then whoever has the most, then at that point, then that will be the three that we actually sit down and, and interview. How's that sound? Good? Sounds good to me. Is everybody in agreement there? Unless for some reason you feel oh, like... Five, five. So you know, I mean, if there's a lot of overlap, you might end up bringing in all five of them, but... Um, I'm sure let's see, let's see what the resumes look like, and then, you know... So you can get those distributed to all the council members. Um, we'll go through them, make our recommendations, see how it all falls out. Okay. Does yeah, that you make want it? To put a time that you want to hear back from us? Because I and don't know how dire need we are. Um, Jay has committed through the end of the year, so uh, we've got plenty of time to kind of go through a, a reasonable process. I'll distribute them after the meeting tonight. <laughs> the end of the year is coming pretty quick. Yeah, about yeah, about yeah, six weeks. <laughs> so, I mean, is, that's, is that a position that we'd like to bring in the person before Jay leaves? Well, I think we'd, we'd like to identify weeks. that person, yes. Yeah, we would like to try to put offer them a position. Um, yeah, a, a two-week time frame that the person can't start because the notice requirements or whatever. Uh, pretty good with us so far. That would only be another meeting or two. Right. And, uh, okay. All right, and let's just understand that when we uh, when we look through these resumes and, and we're not... You're not reaching out to those people. You're just looking at the resumes on its surface. And, and saying, Marissa, I won't talk to you, and I won't talk to Kathy, and I won't talk to Dave, and I won't talk to <laughs> Yeah, Jeff. no, I, th I think right? it would be interesting just to have everybody's straight opinion. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, that's it. Jay, did you have any comments? We're good? Okay. All right, that's it. Next on the agenda is reports and notices, and uh, we all know what that is. <laughs> um, uh, so we'll skip right to the manager's report, if you would, Dave. Pages? Oh. Okay, an up updated project status report is attached. Highlights include uh, Jefferson Street reconstruction project is nearing completion. It's really just uh, paving that needs to be done. All the uh, drainage curves and sidewalk is done at this point. Uh, Good progress has been made over the last couple weeks on the sewer line construction. They're making uh, uh, decent headway. Uh, they've started to install the watering uh, heads through a much larger area in the village. That's not necessarily indicative of work that's going to be done in the next couple weeks. Um, when they get that uh, the watering firm on site, they like to get as much productivity as they can. So they finished out the rest of Brookside, uh, Voorhees, and started on to village. Uh, delivery date of August 19th has been provided for the Engine 1 1 replacement. Bob Grant and I attended the kickoff meeting uh, for the update of the County All Hazard Mitigation Plan last week. Participation in this proce uh, process is required to remain eligible for future FEMA hazard mitigation grants. This process will tie in nicely to both our efforts to improve our CRS rating and the local flood value elevation plan that will serve as the basis for future elevation grants. Our open space grant application for the Jefferson Street property was not funded. Uh, this is disappointing as we've had very successful history with the county open space program previously uh, and because some very sizable projects were funded elsewhere in the county in this round. The Recreation Department has produced an I Love Pequannock t-shirt. <laughs> Uh, we're going to start doing a monthly trivia question on the recreation web uh, webpage, and those shirts will be given as prizes for the first correct answer. Uh, the shirts will also be available in the future for purchase. 
Uh, and uh, following up on Melissa, it's with regret that I announce the passing of Dennis Lonigan, our township fire official. Dennis spent most of his life involved with various aspects of the fire service and was an active chief with the Butler Fire Department. Can I ask a quick question? Did we, um, we didn't put the skin coat over uh, Sunset, did we? We have not. Well, we're trying to okay. get a commitment from them to get that done. <coughs> Uh, did anyone have any other further comments about Dave's um, report? I guess my only thing is if we want to have any more discussions about um, the rejection of that of that grant, but I guess there's not much at this point. Yeah, there's not much discussion that over we can do. It ties into some other problems that exactly. Mentioned that. Yeah, uh, we did talk about you know making our uh, disappointment heard, but on the other hand, we have to work with the county on the right, right. project. We have lots of money from the county over the years, so. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, it's disappointing. It is disappointing. Um, okay, uh, Dave, I'll go to you for your report. Anything? Uh, Frank stole a little by thunder. I just wanted to let everyone know the open space meeting uh, that was scheduled for tonight got moved to the 17th, 7 o'clock, and we will be in the fair housing. Uh, we'll be in the senior housing uh, house uh, for that meeting. Uh, Parks and Rec met tonight. I wasn't able to attend that because I'm here. Uh, fair housing will meet on the 19th. And I don't know if Rocco has had a chance to talk to you, Dave, but we are uh, considering going from seven regular members down to five with two alternates. Uh, he said that he was going to talk to a couple people and... What's that? Um, fair housing? No, fair housing. But the council would have to approve that. Yeah. Are yes. they having trouble reaching the corner? Well, we're having trouble. There's one person whose term is up at uh, the end of this year who said that she would come back uh, as an as a alternate. Uh, and there's one person that's having difficulties making the meetings. That, uh, I believe. We did reach out to that person and he said that he would be more than happy to be an alternate. But, we know that it has to be something that uh, council would have to change the resolution on. Uh, I believe we changed it. A regular member right. doesn't make yeah, any difference. Yeah. <laughs> they still have to get there, right? Right. Um, no, but we should talk about it. If you the number of regular members, your, your number of quorum goes down. Right. And if they can only make it occasionally. But well, we don't want people that can only make it occasionally. Did we not? Did we not change that resolution initially? Wasn't that well, yeah, it used to be alternate, and we actually changed it for somebody that didn't want to be an alternate? Well, first we should solicit for new people. Right. So I mean, if if uh, what is the direction of the committee? Are they lo looking well, that's to? That's why I thought Rocco may have reached out to you, but I, yeah. I, I haven't heard he's not, and I haven't seen him in the last couple. Of counts because I believe that came from the direction of the committee. So, so we should first solicit for new people because we'd be right, able, and if we can't fill it, then we'll have to think about doing that because they have to move right. business. You know, and, they, I, and I believe that we had changed it before for that reason. So maybe um, you can get Rocco to reach out. Yeah, well, the, the next meeting is, uh, I won't be able to make it be in the next Okay. We but we should be advertising for all committees. Uh, right. Yes. Um, well, I know Jay's not here tonight, but it's going out by the 15th. All right, but what's going out is just the letters to the people that were already on whose terms are expiring. There's also an ad, and they're going to be in the newspaper, <coughs> stating, you know, the deadline for volunteering. Okay. We should put it on the yeah. sign out front, too. The website. Volunteers needed. Can we... Please check website. Yeah. And Dave, the only other thing that I wanted to mention was uh, I don't know if Melissa had a chance to talk to you about about the gazebo out front, but I know it was oh, yes, discussed we did. Mm -hmm. a while ago. We, we did. Made the presentation to, to Arlene Platt, but it is a need of desperate yeah. repairs. Um, I don't project. remember who I spoke to in last week, but we did discuss we're trying to actively recruit a scout. Eagle scout. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Thank you. We're hoping, I mean, I know we talked about it being, is it a, too big of a project for an Eagle Scout, but we don't think so, because look, no, what, it, look what the Eagle Scouts have done down at Whittler Lake and everything else. That whole gazebo probably needs to be redone, not just the roof. The, uh, the thing at the Boys and Girls Club was a, 
Um, we get calls all the time from the Boy Scout uh, leaders sure saying, you know, saying, hey, if you know of Eagle Scout projects, let mm -hmm. us know. So I don't know if that's something that would be funneled through well, Parks and Rec with. Uh, around the time that we, uh, we did the dedication, which is almost a year ago, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had reached out to a couple scouts, scout leaders saying, you know, we've got this project. No one ever got back to us, but we, we did actively follow up with okay. them. Either. So we'll, we'll attempt to reach out to uh, the scout groups and recruit some of them. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Steve? That's it, thank you. All right, Kat? No, I think... Uh, you said it all? I think I said it all. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rich, you have anything? Just a reminder, Friday night. For everybody? Is everybody going other First than day. Dave? I believe everybody's going. No, mm -hmm. you're in Vegas. I'm not. <laughs> everybody's going to be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, Dave, one quick question. The high school has a playoff game. Are they still going to be able to have uh, someone from the first day squad there? No. They can't. Uh-oh. Um, that's a good question. It, it's a home playoff game, too. It's a home playoff game. <laughs> haven't had one of those in a long time. All right. I'll, I'll reach out to Greg, and we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Okay, uh, Jay, do you have anything? Uh, no comment, no. All right. Um, just real quick, uh, my the Environmental Commission meets tomorrow night at 7.30, and the Flood Committee meets Thursday at 7.30. Um, tomorrow, as a reminder, tomorrow is Veterans Day. Um, the community is invited to attend a Veterans Day service at 11 a.m. on the front lawn at PV Middle School. Um, please take time tomorrow to remember, thank, and honor all our U.S. military veterans who have served to protect our freedoms and have contributed to our national security. Next time you see a veteran, please thank him or her for her, their service. All right, and that's it for me. Um, next item on the agenda is public comment. Um, if anyone has any um, last-minute public comment uh, Items, please come up, state your name and address for the record. Let me come to these meetings. Oh, that's okay. We love hearing from you. Okay, I just have a question. This is the second time, so it isn't the first time. And I'm not sitting in the very back, and I do have my hearing aids in. I want to know why there are only two people I can really hear when I see that you all have microphones, and then when you talk to each other, we can't really hear in the background what you're saying. I don't know if that's secret, if that's the part of the thing where you're in. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but the guys don't talk up, you know, and they talk behind the microphones. And I think you're defeating your purpose of having a microphone. I don't know if you can hear them all clearly in the back when they talk to each other. Who can you hear and who can't you hear? Yeah. Who can you hear and who can't? You, hear? you and Kathy. Uh oh. Big mouth. <laughs> I mean, Dave is so <laughs> that say, Melissa? And, 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 and so is that, that Dave. And I mean, Jay doesn't even get near his microphone <laughs> when he talks. We so don't I, apologize. We'll I don't make understand why we'll speak why to the men. Microphones. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, and unless I sit up here on the table to hear you guys, I mean, it's. Thank you for I, I letting just, us yeah, know. Thank I just you. Think it's, I think it's a disservice to the people who come that you talk behind your microphones and we can't hear what you're saying. Well, I'll tell you what, we, we will make a more conscious effort um, <laughs> to speak into the microphones, but whenever you guys really can't hear us, I know Frank's good at doing this, it's Let okay to go like, can't hear you, use the microphone, whatever. Because um, I think sometimes it's just done subconsciously. Thank you. Anyone else? Have a comment regarding anything? No? Okay. All right. Well, that's uh, it. We're going to go actually into a uh, closed session motion. now. Close if someone... Uh, second. Thank you. I forgot about the motion. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. <laughs>